Welcome to the Intelligent Investing Podcast, where modern portfolio theory can suck it. A student of the school of Graham and Doddsville and a clergy member of the Church of Warren Buffett, here's your host, Eric Schlein. Hi, this is Eric Schlein. You are listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast. And we have Anthony Waldachuk back on with us again. Uh, Anthony, welcome back to the show. Hey, how are you doing today? Pretty good. Um, so I want to talk to you about another one of these obscure companies that you own. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Avoca, Avoca, uh, LLC, ticker A-V-O-A. So however you pronounce it, tell us about it. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Do you know how to well, pronounce anyway, it? I, I think it's Avoca. I'm not sure. I've never, I've never actually spoken to management on this company. So, okay. um, uh, I'm going, I'm going to go with Avoca just because um, apparently it, apparently Avoca Island or Avoca Island is their main, well, asset, but not really their asset. I'll get into that later, but we'll call it Avoca for now. Um, symbols, A-V-O-A, like Apple Victor, Oscar Apple. And it, uh, you know, it, like all my favorites, it trades by appointment. Although, yeah, I think about once or twice a week, you might see this thing trade um, over on OTC markets. Um, about has a nice wide bid and an offer about 900 bid, 1159 offered right now for that's good for about close to a $9 million market cap. Um, pays no dividend, although it used to. Um, it's by and large, it's they're the main business is they search for oil and gas on Avoca Island, which is about 90 miles west of uh, New Orleans. Um, they own the entire island, uh, about 16,000 acres. Um, it essentially has um, has a couple side businesses on it. Um, has a duck club, which has, uh, has a what? You cut out there. It has a there's a duck club. Um, on on the island, which I have a funny feeling is uh, part of the um, um, might be part of uh, the the old boys network from uh, Whitney Bank. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but that's an mm -hmm. old school banking concern down in New Orleans, and um, they actually run this out of the um, the Whitney Bank offices. So were, were they were they spun out by them or something years ago or? It, I would think so. It's it, the majority owner is Whitney Bank, um, their trust department. So they kind of run it. The, the board of managers and officers for Avoca is the same as it is for, you know, the senior management at Whitney Bank. So they're they, they kind of share all, and so is which is good because you know they probably their overhead something like twenty grand a year. So you know that's they don't they're everyone's salaries are taken care of by the bank or the trust department. Um, rent is covered by, you know, Whitney bank. It's, it, you know, it, it's a pretty sweet arrangement. It's essentially this thing just kind of subsists on the side and they're just looking to gather royalties out of it. Um, but there's also, um, in addition to this being, um, in addition to this thing being, um, an oil and gas concern, which is dwindling very quickly here. Um, it, the, the main valuation that you're going to look on the, the, the main thing that, the, that they have, that's that you're going to like is their stock and bond portfolio. Okay. Um, they have something on the order of about eight, $8 million in stock and bonds and about $1 million in cash that they have say on their balance sheet. Um, so the stock no trade so stock is trading at their portfolio and you get the yeah, business for free. So, okay. Um, I was, I was saying yeah, that you get the, for about the, um, you get the portolio for, for stock and bo stock bond and cash portfolio, essentially at $9 million. And then you cap, get the business so, for free. Um, exactly. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. that's, that's it. So, um, you know, there is a, like I said, there's a, um, there's a, a duck club that's on the Island that they're obliged to, to keep, um, they actually do pull in something on the order of twenty million, uh, probably twenty thousand dollars a year, in a from allig alligator hides and eggs. Um, I don't know how that operation is run, um, but it's free money as far as I'm concerned. Alligator hides um, and eggs. Yes. Okay. So it's a 
it's a dwindling business. They they were that's down from forty thousand bucks that they uh, got in two thousand sixteen. Um, so th- essentially, what they have is there's. I think there's about like five producing wells all owned by uh, Alta Mesa Services. Um, that's their sole lease right now. Um, and then they get so, they get royalties on it. Is that the deal? Right. So um, let's see here. I mean, they're looking at last about two years ago, one hundred sixteen thousand bucks in royalties that they got. Um, which and it, like I said, it's dwindling. They're not. Ha- there's been no one else that's been looking to drill on the island here for the last couple of years. Now, that being said, they do have um, um, their larger project here is what they're looking to do is make it into a, um, they're looking to establish a bottomland hardwood forest and cypress swamp, um, coastal and non-coastal wetland mitigation bank. That's a mouthful, I know. But um, what they're doing is looking for people who are looking to offer um, their pollution with tax credits for um, looking to buy this buy this uh, area, um, you know. As far as, and I can't really speak to what kind of tax credits they're looking to uh, be able to sell here. Um, I'm sure they've been these guys have been really good stewards of capital. Like I said, they, they take literally nothing in compensation to run this thing. And, and how's their um, portfolio been managed over the years? I mean, what did, do you know what they own? Um, I have no idea what they own. Um, I do know it's about, um, well, you know, I'd say it's about half, half fixed income, half stocks, uh, stocks. I have no idea. They do seem to trade it somewhat regularly. If you look at the, uh, you look at their, uh, um, financials, it does look like they have moved in and out of a few names. So I'm guessing that the trust department is probably in charge of that. Um, as far as fixed income, it's usually very short-term municipal bonds, three months or less. So it's mostly money market instruments that they hold over on the fixed income side of things. How have they grown over the last decade? Um, they've really done nothing but shrunk. <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, like I, as I alluded to, there's no um, there's no dividend being paid on it, and they haven't for two years because they've been spending – upwards of a half million dollars a year trying to get this uh, this land mitigation bank started mm-hmm. on the island. Um, so that and legal fees have really eaten into anything and everything that they've made. Um, that being said, if you go back, like, mm, let's look back uh, 2007 or so, um, this thing paid out $720 to share dividends. So, you know, in 2000, 2008. Was that from, was that from the oil business, though? That's straight up oil, oh, oil but, and gas. But that's but that's you said dwindling, right? So yeah, so for, in, in two thousand eight, four hundred and fifty dollars a share, and it's been dropping every year ever since. So what's um, what's the value? I mean, why do you own this thing? Um, well, I'm really Cause, curious because so, so so far as you're pitching this to me, it doesn't want to make me want to buy it. <laughs> it, 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 is, you know, it. The thing is, is that you know they they could have someone come back in and start drilling again. Um, you know, that the oil and gas is still underneath there. I mean, granted, there's been some, the, the, uh, current wells that are out there are depleted. Okay. Um, you know, from what I can tell, it's like I said, you know, they brought in what, uh, 116,000 bucks. Um, what was it in 2016, which, you know, the, but the thing is, is like nowadays, if you look at what wetland mitigation and what people are willing to pay for that to offset their, um, um, pollution and CO2 tax credits can you, can you and whatever explain, they... Can you explain to listeners what that means? What's that? What, wetland mitigation? Yeah. Um, um, it's basically what you're doing is you're you're setting aside um, the, the best way I understand it is you, you, you're setting aside um, natural preserves, if you will, just because the federal government's interested in, you know, being conservative with land and um, expanding the nat- national park base and so on and so forth. Um, what they're willing to do from a tax point point of tax point of view is, you know, if you're willing to buy this land and not touch it, we'll let you pay off what you could develop it for um, is how I understand it. So say for instance, you know, I granted you couldn't put, a uh, Trump Tower in the middle of Avoca Island. So, you know, that's it's somewhat limited. 
But, you know, if you sat there and said, hey, well, otherwise, if you don't let me, the one thing I really could do here is just, you know, start poking holes in the ground and put oil derricks up and, you know, ruin this habitat for all these uh, ducks and geese that they have there. Um, you know, the federal government's going to want to partner with you in keeping that wildlife, you know, out there. And so they're willing to give you tax credits to offset that. Now, you can go ahead and take that and, you know, sell that. Avoca could take this land and sell it and, you know, and uh, realize who knows how much. And that's the question. What's it worth? I don't know. I have a smallish position in this thing. I'm willing to sit on it and just wait the thing out. Um, you know, the thing can be volatile because it's so illiquid. For instance, it dropped down to about 600 bucks a share um, in the middle of last year where I doubled up my position. And now we're back up to you know, around 1100. So, um, you know, it's it's hard to say what they're going to do with it. Um, I have not spoken to management, as I said. So, um, you know, that's kind of a heads I, you know, heads I win, tails I don't lose anything. Yeah, um, pretty straightforward. You know. Yeah, no, and it's basically, we're looking at an asset play that's not, that has a fairly solid management, and it's a fairly, you know, hands-off business. They're, they're just trying to, uh, you know, they, they're just trying to work their way into making the uh, island worth something. They don't really carry the island at anything on their balance sheet. So, so you're, getting, you're getting a free call option in a few scenarios, it, basically. Exactly, yeah, no. Okay. And, uh you know, and who knows? Maybe they, maybe the alligator uh, hide harvesting business goes through the roof here in the next couple of years. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I and really if it doubt. doesn't, you're not going to lose a lot of money, basically. Exactly. So, you know, the thing is, is like, unless the you know, stock portfolio it? tanks, and then you're kind of screwed potentially, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But you know, like I said, about half of that's uh, you know short term municipal. So, right. you know, worst you know worst case scenario here, you know, it really doesn't. Yeah, you're you know, you're, you're not going to lose a lot of money. Basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I I probably could trade the thing between six hundred and like twelve, thirteen hundred, or something like that. Um, but you know, it's just not worth my time, to be okay. frank with you. So, okay. Um, but well, but cool. anyway, straightforward that's, that's business. Basically, yeah, very. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Not nothing too nothing too exciting, unfortunately. All right. Well, Anthony, I appreciate your time, and uh, this was interesting. Thanks for coming on. No, hey, you're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good day. Hey, you too. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast with Eric Schlein. If you'd like to connect with Eric for questions, comments, feedback, ideas, or to inquire about being on the show, please contact Eric at intelligentinvesting at gmail.com. So, in the words of Charlie Munger, I have nothing to add.